Hello, my name is Frank Schorsch, and for this section of the video tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to build the arm chain. So to begin with, I'm going to shift into my top viewport. I've already got my bone edit tools open, and I'm going to create a clavicle near the center. Move it out to the shoulder, create an upper arm bone, create a lower I'm going to go ahead and shift into my front viewport. These guys should be at. this into position for the shoulder. Looks like I might need a little bit more length here. So you want to make sure that you do not put any additional rotation information on this joint. So always rotate and always edit your bone and local for transform. Approximate length of the arm that I want. I'm going to go ahead and reset the rotation information up here on both the x and the y axes so that our arms are flat across the top. I'm just going to make sure that they're in the correct z position. So, I'm going to build this in T pose, but you really have to ask yourself what is more important for you. If you're going to do a bunch of animation above your head, you want to keep it in T pose. Because when you rotate the arm, it's about 45 degrees of rotation to do actions above the head, and about 45 degrees of rotation to do actions below the shoulder. If the majority of your animation takes place below your shoulder level, it'll be more beneficial for you to keep your model in a pose, because there'll be less of a degree of rotation, which means less deformation on your shoulders. So now that you have your arm bones built in, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up twist bones for your shoulder. Start by duplicating your upper arm bone. We're going to use two bones to drive the rotation in the shoulder. So divide this bone into thirds. Okay. Go ahead and delete the front bone. I'm going to change the color of these so they're a little bit easier to identify. I'm also going to turn on the side pins and increase the size of the bones. Once that's done, make sure that your bone edit mode is turned off. Go ahead and align it to the upper arm. Select both of them, turn off your Link both these into the upper arm bone, and hold down Alt, right click, freeze the transforms. Once you've done that, we're going to build a exposed transformer to drive the rotation of the twist bones. But before we do that, you'll notice that the clavicle and the upper arm bone are not aligned. So we're going to create a dummy to hold the rotation values on the upper arm. So align it to the upper arm, both position and orientation. Go ahead and link this into the clavicle, and then create a exposed transformer. Align that to the same position, drag it up a little bit to get it out of the way, and link that into the clavicle as well. Send your modifier tab, go ahead and select the upper arm bone to expose the node, and then deselect parent and choose the dummy to use as the local reference node. If you've done this correctly, you'll notice down here the exposed value should all be zeroed. Once you've got that set up, go ahead and select your first twist bone. Right click, wire parameters, transform, rotation, 0, x. Then click on your exposed transformer and link it to your local x. So you want this first bone to not rotate at all, so we're going to be multiplying it by a negative 1 and then connecting it across. I'm going to refresh this window to bring in the second bone. And for this one, we're going to multiply it by a negative 0.5 so that inherits only half the rotation the system. Now you can go ahead and close your wired parameters. If you rotate this, you'll see that the, the second twist bone rotates half as much as the arm and the top bone doesn't rotate at all. Now the only problem with this is we're going to end up with flipping on one of our axes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my front fins so you can see this. As you bring the arm across in front of the chest, you'll notice that the twist bone on the top is going to flip over. To deal with this, we're going to go ahead and choose the axes that are going to be the most important for our animation, which are probably going to be Y and Z, and X is going to be the least important. So we're going to change it so that the bones flip over only when you rotate past 90 degrees on your X axis. So click on your exposed transformer and switch the order from XYZ as the default to ZXY. And this will cause it to flip along the x-axis instead of along the y or the z. 
So you'll notice with this change, it no longer flips as the arm crosses in front of the body. With that, we finished off the twist bones that we'll need for the shoulder. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to set up your twist bones for your forearm. So you built the twist bones into your shoulder, and now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to build them into your forearm. So go ahead and duplicate the forearm bone. And we're going to use three bones, so I'm going to refine this in half, and then each of the halves in half again. So you notice these are a little awkwardly shaped, so I'm going to go ahead and create an end bone, and resize these until they're all approximately the same size. Yeah, with that, I'm going to delete the end bone, select these four, change the color, turn on side pins, and increase the size. So now go ahead and make sure that bone edit mode is off, and align it to the forearm, and then delete the rear. Select your three twist bones, turn bone mode off, and link them into your forearm. Then hold down Alt, right click, and freeze their transfer. So because the orientation of the wrist and the forearm are the same, we won't have to create a dummy to hold the rotation values of the wrist like we did for the shoulder. So we can go straight to creating a exposed transform. I'm going to go ahead and align that to the wrist position, move it up a little ways, and link it into that bone chain so it falls through. So I'm going to use the wrist as the exposed node, and now we can start wiring in our twist bones. So right click, wire parameters, transform, rotation, 0x to our exposed transforms local x. So for our first twist bone, we want it to be linked directly, because when you rotate your wrist, the bones in your forearm flop over each other and give you full rotation. For your next bone, go ahead and update it into the parameters window. It's going to rotate by 0 0.66, and that will give us two-thirds of the rotation. And for the final bone, we're going to use 0 0.33, which will give us a successive breaking of the rotation as we approach. So now I'll go ahead and grab your list and rotate this to make sure that the bones are behaving correctly. And as you notice here, they're kind of reaching halfway and then rotating back into their original positions. So the reason why this is occurring is because it's using the same order of operations that our shoulder was. So you'll notice as you're rotating your hand, we have the highest range of motion along our y and x-axis rotation but a very limited rotation around our Z. So if we set this up so that it'll flop on the Z axis instead, we can shift this to X, Z, Y, because X is our most important axis. Z is the one we want it to flop over on, and Y is our second most important axis. Since we've gone and changed this over, you'll notice that it now rotates normally along the X, and along the Y. But when you break past the 90 degree mark on the Z, it'll flip over. Now that you have your twist bones built in, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to build a simple hand. I'm going to start with the bone for the palm. And then I'm going to make the bones for the fingers. So the distance between your knuckle and your middle joint is approximately half the size of your finger. So I'm going to build these accordingly. Alright, ratio is looking pretty good there. I'm going to use this for the basis of the middle finger. So I'll go ahead and copy this over. This will become our index. I'm going to go ahead and shrink down the size of these. Copy this over and turn this into ring finger. And then once more for your little finger. And shrink these down quite a bit. Alright, that'll do pretty nicely for our fingers. I'm also going to make one more copy for the thumb. So your thumb has two joints, but the third one's buried at the back of the hand. So to mimic that, I'm still going to use the three bones. And I'm going to shrink down the size of the uh, fingers for the thumb. I'm going to 
and build the natural curve in the hand to the position of these fingers, and also along the vertical. There we go. So now you don't want to link bones directly into bones, so I'm going to go ahead and create some dummies to act as intermediaries. And you want to align these to uh, both the position and orientation. There we go. So now go ahead and take these bones, link them into the dummies, then go ahead and select the dummies. So once you've got all of the dummies linked into the hand bone, go ahead and align the hand bone to the wrist on the arm, and rotate that back into a horizontal position. Then we're going to select all of the dummies and adjust their position a little bit. Alright. Pretty happy with that. Now go ahead and link the hand bone into the wrist. And once you've done that, you'll be done with your hands. So you've got your hand built. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to set up the controller to drive the joint positions for your hand. Start with, I'm going to create a circle. And I'll line that up to the wrist there. Move it up and link it back into the wrist. After you've got your controller in there, go ahead and add a attribute holder modifier. Then we can open up our Mac scripts and import the sliders we'll be using. So I've given you two separate scripts for your hands. One has a single slider for each of the fingers, and the other has sliders for each individual joint. So I'm going to show you how to set up the connections for both of those, starting with the hand with the multiple sliders. So here's the Mac script. I'm going to go ahead and open up my listener to make sure that these are being evaluated correctly. First things first is to define the attribute, which it's done there. I'm going to make sure I have my hand controller selected, and then run just this line of code to add the sliders to the object. So now that you've got your sliders in there, go ahead and select all of your dummies and all of your bones in your hand. And we're going to freeze the transforms on these. Now I'm going to show you how to link these up, starting with the thumb. So wire parameters, transform, rotation, 0, Z. Link it up to your hand, modified object, attribute holder, hand controls, and we're doing the thumb base. So we're going to have to do a conversion from degrees to radians. We're doing a one-way connection from the controller to the bone. Click connect. So you're going to have to do this for each one of the bones, but once you have it done, you'll have full control over each section. I'm going to go ahead and break this connection and load in the other script and show you how that's set up. So for the minimal controls, when you have these three lines uncommented, you'll be able to update the UI inside of the attribute holder level. So I'm just going to evaluate the script, which should change it into the limited sliders. And to set this up, you're going to want to mirror your arm first. But once you do, you'll be able to go to Animation, Reaction Manager, and create a new master, which is going to be the controller, modified object, attribute holder, level. I'm going to use the thumb again. It's going to have three slaves, starting with the first thumb bone. Add the second one in. And the third. Once you get the slaves loaded in there, it's going to create three new states. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete those and add my own, starting with negative 90, 0, and positive 90. I'm going to go ahead and move the slider up to 90 so I can see where the bones will be positioned when I have the slider maxed. Go into my graph editor and start setting some values for these bones. Looks like we're going to be using a positive rotation value, so I'm just going to go ahead and set those up for each of the bones. Take a look how they end up bending. So the idea is you'll be setting up a set of these reaction controllers for each one of the fingers. The only problem with this is that it's very linear in its control. You don't get a very good range of control for each of your joints. It's just more of an open and close sort of thing. So 
once you've gone and linked in all your fingers and renamed all of your objects, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a controller for the clavicle, and then we'll move into which ARM system will be best for you. Orient the clavicle's position to the center of the clavicle bone. Go ahead and go to your hierarchy tab, affect the object only, rotate it 90 degrees into a vertical position, affect the pivot only, and align it to the pivot of the clavicle. Go ahead and take the clavicle, link it into the controller, and you'll be good to go.